Philadelphia thinks I hate him, even though uh, I used to cover Jay Wright. I love Villanova. Duke and Villanova are my favorite college basketball programs in Gonzaga. Um, and I also loved Andy Reid, who was there. Um, but I think now my favorite player in the NFL is a Philadelphia Eagle. Malcolm Jenkins. The Eagles have put in their locker room a huge sign in their locker room. It says Super Bowl 52 champions. A big sign. And Malcolm Jenkins came out yesterday and said, I hate it. I am way beyond celebrating last year's accomplishments. They don't mean anything. We're at the bottom just like everybody else. God, I love Malcolm Jenkins. Memo to Philadelphia and all you other teams that win a singular title. The minute the parade ends, five minutes later, go to a film room. Because that trophy doesn't do your prep. In fact, I would say it inhibits your prep. The teams we talk about in sports, 30 years later, 50 years later, Bill Walsh's 49ers, the 70 Steelers, Showtime Lakers, New England Dynasty will be talked about in 30 years. Michael Jordan's Bulls, that lasted a decade. You know who we thought we were going to talk about? The Seattle Seahawks. They won a big Super Bowl, and then they got chatty and cocky and political and fractured and ripped their quarterback in ESPN, the magazine. And you know what Seattle is? One more Super Bowl than the Detroit Lions have. Ooh, congratulations. Philadelphia, while you're congratulating yourself, you do realize in your own state, Steelers have six. You have one. In your own division, you're a laughing stock. The Cowboys have five. The Giants have four. The Redskins have three. <laughs> the Eagles have one. In your own city, Villanova is the current dynasty. You're not. Here's what you are, Philadelphia. Slightly better now than the Jags, the Titans, the Lions, and the Arizona Cardinals. Why don't you throw another parade? That's all you are. But your coach has got a book. And Lane Johnson's calling out everybody like the Patriots. A real dynasty. And you got a banner in your locker room. And Malcolm Jenkins is like, pass, hard pass. This is why I always supported Malcolm Jenkins in all this anthem stuff, because he wasn't divisive. He was a grown-up. He had opinions. He had causes he cared about, but he handled it like a man. He wasn't trying to pick fights. He was trying to get things solved. It's why I like him. This is how adults talk. Remember, Lane Kiffin was on my show earlier this week, and he addressed the rumors that Alabama cheats, Saban cheats, Saban, oh, he's got all the best players. He must cheat. And here's what Lane Kiffin said. I used to sit in staff meetings as a head coach, and an assistant coach would lose a player to another program. And they say, oh, they cheated. You know, they bought the player. People just say that to take blame off of, okay, why did we lose the player? You know, could we have done something better in the recruiting process to sign the player? So we're just going to say someone else cheated because, you know, that makes us look better. People saying, Nick Saban, well, it's like cheating because he has better players than everyone. Well, <clears throat> They didn't just walk. They just didn't walk onto campus and through the doors. You know, he spent time getting them. He's he's the best recruiter in the world because of the time that he spends. The only cheating they do is that he just works harder than everybody else. Yeah. Nick Saban's got, what, five, six national titles? I lost count. I told the story a couple of years ago. He won a national championship. He was running off the field. He ran into the locker room, and he went over to his agent, Jimmy Sexton, I have this documented, and he said to Jimmy Sexton, all right, this isn't easy. This just puts more pressure on us for next year. That's how winners think. That's how legends think. Philadelphia, though, got big, got big banner in the locker room. Hey, we're, we're better than the Lions. We got one more than the Jags. Okay, we thought Seattle was going to roll, because Seattle, like Philadelphia, has a good coach. Seattle, like Philadelphia, 
had a had a great all-time quarterback, Wentz and Russell Wilson. Those are Hall of Fame talents. Seattle had a great defense like Philadelphia. Seattle was in a division where they had a rival in San Francisco, but they were better than them and were going to dominate them. And Seattle is now just dysfunctional. <laughs> I mean, when I think of Seattle right now, I'm like, that's what I think. They're just dysfunctional. Malcolm Jenkins should be noted. Adrian Brody won an Oscar. And Rich Beam won a major in golf. You want to be Jack? Want to be Tiger? Or just want to be a guy? (sighs) So fired up today. You should like that, Joy, because you grew up a Steeler fan, not an Oh, I love that. Not an Eagles fan. I love that. No, it's 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 right though. It's why it's so hard to repeat. And especially you're always talking about teams that have nicknames and catchphrases. Jacksonville. They had a whole gimmick going on last year with the the dog masks and they're the underdogs and no one gives them any chance. And yeah. I mean, I admittedly didn't give them a chance against against the Patriots, but that's that's gotta go now. Yeah. Now but, you have to Yeah, dog masks with adorable. Reboot. Bring them out on Halloween, then put them away and <laughs> right. win football games. You're not the underdog anymore. No, now you're the target. Let me shift gears to this. Uh some people just have more influence for a variety of reasons. You know, Jerry Jones When he first came into this league, you know, as a Cowboys, who was this cocky oil man, this risk taker, him and Jimmy fighting, him and Parcells fighting. But I will say this over time, Jerry Jones has incredible influence in the National Football League for years and my entire life. I used to live in Vegas. My entire life, the NFL is like, no, we don't do point spreads. Vegas is evil. No good. We can't talk Vegas. A couple years ago, Jerry Jones is like, I think it's about time to have a football franchise in Las Vegas. And what do you know? Two months later, they voted. And Las Vegas is going to get the Raiders. That was Jerry. Because for 50 years, my entire life, I lived in Vegas. Every time you brought it up, no, that's not, no, we don't even know what betting lines are. We don't, excuse me, nobody bets football. We don't want to discuss Jerry's like, I like Vegas. It's time for Vegas. They moved to Vegas. By the way, Los Angeles went a lot of years without the NFL. Rams Raiders gone. Then Jerry talked to his buddy Stan Kroenke. He said, we're becoming an entertainment sport. We're a TV show more than a game. We got to get to Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Remember he said that on the show one time? Did you love the way Jerry said that? Los Angeles. Los Angeles. And suddenly the Rams didn't have a team, and Los Angeles had a team. Jerry's got influence. Uh, Des Bryant, let me segue to this. Des Bryant didn't have a team. Doug Baldwin of the Seahawks yesterday, I won't be healthy. They're a mess at wide receiver. The New England Patriots, did they cut another receiver yesterday? Are desperate at wide receiver. The Cleveland Browns are desperate for talent. The Jags just lost Marquise Lee. Des Bryant this morning admitted, yeah, I'll probably play a little bit later in the year. Browns pass, Patriots pass, Jags pass. I think this is Jerry Jones' influence. Jerry's not doing it to be mean-spirited, but when Jerry talks, people listen. And Jerry Jones has always been player-friendly, a bit of an enabler, looks off in the other way, and Jerry Jones, and Dez can still play. He had 850 yards last year and six touchdowns. He can still play. May not be a one, but he can certainly be a two in a lot of teams. And when Jerry said, we're, we're going to get him out of the building, with the Cowboys' current wide receiving group, with Jason Witten on retirement, with, with all that, having no receivers, Alan Hearns and Cole Beasley, Jerry's like, we're, we're going we're gonna to move him out of the building. When Jerry talks about Vegas, Los Angeles, and Jerry was talking there, this, this guy's a lot, he's a lot of work. That's Jerry's influence. Now, I'm not saying Jerry did it on purpose. Maybe Jerry, and this would be strange, but doesn't quite even understand how much influence he has. But I've watched this guy. Dallas is dying for a star receiver, a big presence. Dez can still play. All-time franchise leader in touchdowns. Again, Dez isn't Julio Jones. He's not Antonio Brown, Odell Beckham. 
But the dude can play 850 yards and six touchdowns last year with a young quarterback who battled an offensive line, no running game, and noise all year long in a really good division. Yeah, that's that Jerry Jones, once again, without even knowing it this time, has major influence. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.